First of all, yes, I did subject not the Bible itself, but I subjected what has been commonly believed concerning Jesus Christ, I subjected that to scrutiny. And I did so with evidences and references from the Bible, Old and New Testament, of which I've only given to you maybe a tenth of the references which I have here, which itself is only a tenth of the references that could be made available to you. And I'll just deal with one. And I'll ask, give you the chance to answer. You give me one reference in the Old or the New Testament to the Trinity. One reference. And the only one you'll find is the one that has been expunged, abrogated. This is the most blatant contradiction of the Bible. Among other blatant contradictions that I read, I say you or anyone else give me a verse from the Bible where Jesus said, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Trinity. Now, if Jesus didn't say that, if the historical Jesus didn't say that, then I say, that's like lying on my mother. That's like lying on my wife. That's like lying on your mother or your wife. And you would not allow somebody to lie on your mother or your wife. You would defend them. And I love Jesus more than I love my wife. And you should love Jesus more than you love your, your wife. And I said that that trinity is a lie and a fabrication against Jesus. And there's no evidence of it in the words of Jesus. Now, we were talking here about the historical Jesus. Now, relative to the Quran, the Quran has been subjected to scrutiny on a historical basis, on a scriptural basis, as to its source, its references, its validity. It has stood that test, but that's another discussion here. Here we're talking about several blatant inconsistencies relative to the person, the mission, and the message of Jesus Christ. And what I try to delineate here is that there's obviously two different Christs. There are two separate Christs that are not, they don't collaborate, they don't mix, they're not compatible. One has got to be a lie and the other one's got to be the truth. Now, if the one, the historical Jesus that I gave reference to is a lie, then it's up to the people to say that historical Jesus that you refer to is a lie. And the one that I refer to as being the mythological Jesus created by Paul in the church is the truth. So now I give you the chance to give us just one evidence of the Trinity, since that's the biggest lie. Good try. <laughs> I mean, a lot of metaphors, a lot of insinuations, but no direct reference at all to the issue of Trinity from Jesus. And ironically, my friend, in case you don't know this, Paul himself never mentioned the Trinity the Trinity was decided in 354 by Constantine at the Council of Nicaea. I gave you the hint. I gave you the information. All you had to do was follow the dots. Now, I, I want to make it plain that we Muslims and Christians, we cousins. See, we cousins. We're all one human family. And we ain't going to break out no knives or no guns. And we ain't going to take nobody hostage here. <laughs> and we ain't not going to start no new crusade. What we're trying to do here is, we're trying to reason, said the Lord. Prove all things by reason. And I say, 
Let's go back to the Ten Commandments of Moses before we start getting hypothetical. Let's go to the Ten Commandments of Moses that starts out like this. Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord thy God is how many? How, how many? End of story. <laughs> 